Alice Cooper's Solid Rock Teen Center gives back so much to the Phoenix area community. Uh, they're also working on expanding to Mesa as well. There's a lot to talk about here and a lot to learn um, about what that organization actually does. Uh, this is a two-segment episode. In the first segment, we'll have Randy Spencer, who actually works at the Solid Rock. And in the second segment, we'll have Sophie Dorston, who is actually a student that teaches and has performed there and learned quite a bit as she's been there. So this is going to be fun. Buckle up. Stay tuned. We're ready to rock. Welcome to the Song and Verse Podcast, a discovery of God's Word, one song and a few verses at a time. Here's your host, Rockin' Odd Todd. Hello and welcome to segment number two of the Alice Cooper Solid Rock episode. Um, we had a great time sitting down talking to Sophie Dorston about her involvement with the Solid Rock, both as a student and as a vocal instructor. Um, we learned a lot from Sophie. You know, they all collaborated together on U2's 40 to try and help with the mood of things during the COVID-19 shutdown. And Sophie helps bring a little bit of narrative to that as well. Being a songwriter herself, she kind of tells us about how that's helped her songwriting process and what she's learned in the long run from that as well. So I really hope you enjoy this episode with Sophie as much as I did. Thanks for watching. With that, today in our second segment of the Alice Cooper Solid Rock uh, podcast, we'll be talking with Mrs. Sophie Dorston, who is a musician in the Phoenix area. Is that correct? Gilbert, Phoenix, that yeah. whole... Yes. Okay. And, and so we're really going to talk to her about her musical journey and see where that led to Alice Cooper's Solid Rock. How's it going, Sophie? It's great. How are you? I am doing wonderful. So it is so awesome to have you with us. We're honored to have you on today's podcast. And Thank let's you. hear a little bit about your journey as far as music's concerned. How did you begin and how did you start to navigate that? Yeah, um, I began music. I first did like music I started singing in choir in about like fourth grade and um and then I made a little band with my brothers at that time we were all around the same age um and then after our little band my older brother went off to another band and my younger brother didn't want to play anymore so then I picked up the guitar and um sort of taught myself mm -hmm. and then um and then a few years into playing guitar, I found Alice Cooper's Solid Rock through their little competition that they do. I shouldn't wow. say a little. It's a pretty cool competition yeah. called Proof is in the Pudding. And um, I, I think my first year, I was 13. And I've done that for five years now. And it's been such an awesome experience. And that led me to going to the rock to either give vocal lessons or like get lessons like guitar piano and vocal lessons so yeah wow and so so did you start going there at age 13 or is it a little after or um i think i was in the competition at 13 and then i went i think like a year or two after to okay. start doing that i even recorded a song there um when i was 15 and then i also recorded a song um this past year so Cool. And, and I think I saw in your bio or somewhere that you've actually sang on stage with Alice. Is that correct? Yeah, I sang with him. Um, it was for the AZ lottery ticket okay. um, thing. He was, he was like the face of it. And mm -hmm. then, um, so he was performing and I sang back up with his wife and it was a really cool experience. Oh, that's so cool. So how much did you know of Alice Cooper before all this? Is, is it, was it kind of new to you or your parents into it, that kind of thing or? Um, yeah, I didn't really like know much of it. I was because at first it was I was just introduced into like the competition. I'm like, Alice Cooper, like, that's a different genre than I am. Like, how am I going to be in a competition against like bands or whatever, you know? And right. so then, um, but yeah, and then I have met him several times. And like, it's such a really cool place to be. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. That's awesome. And, and you know, it's it's so cool because I just did a podcast with, with a young lady, a lot like you, we, we did one about jewel. Um, and you know, just that whole singer songwriter genre. And it's so raw what, what you guys do versus like the big production value with a band and everything else. 
And mm-hmm. to be able to just walk up and like, you know, grab an instrument and just start playing and singing, singing, and to just be able to pour your heart out like that, that's something special. So that's a really cool talent to have. Um, Thank you. Yeah, definitely. So, so has the, the rock led to some opportunities for you as oh, well? Yeah, definitely. I've had so many opportunities, so many amazing opportunities singing at like baseball, uh, spring training games. Um, I mean, there's just so many like shows that they've offered me around town. That's like pretty amazing shows, even like concerts. They even like give the teens like some concert tickets sometimes. Wow. Um, Yeah. It's just pretty amazing. So so like where in, I'm I'm guessing, is it Phoenix that you normally played in or is it the whole state or where, where primarily would you do a show? Around Phoenix area. That's where they're located. And a lot of the shows are around there. I live in Gilbert. Um, Mm -hmm. so some of my like own shows I do down here, but it can, it can go down to Gilbert, Scottsdale, uh, Chandler, whatever goes pretty much everywhere. And (laughs) is it all like kind of within an hour of Phoenix? Is that kind of maybe the right time frame or something like that? Okay, cool. So, you know, when it comes to doing some of those venues, what is a singer songwriter venue? Is it normally just kind of like a coffee shop or do you have like some other, you know, yeah. what's, what's an average place for you to play? What, where would somebody come to like see you play if they wanted to know more about some of your music and things of that nature? Yeah. Um, I played a lot of coffee shops in my earlier years, like when I was around 13, 14. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I've played at a lot of restaurants um, there was this place called Olive Mill. I, they're still around, but um, yeah, I played there a lot, and that was a really good steady gig. Um, so, like uh, breweries and like coffee shops, restaurants, stuff like that, is something where I mainly am at. Um, but yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So, so we were talking a little bit off air about the performance that you guys did of U two's Forty, which. You know, the the whole rendition that you guys with the with the, the the solid rock set up during COVID where, you know, every day somebody come on and play for a while, man, that was so uplifting to just see, you know, and and put out and really, really just offer people a break from the nonsense of everything, you know. And yeah. and, I, and when I say nonsense, I just mean the whole ordeal. I don't mean people social distancing and all that. I yeah. totally understand where they're coming from. But uh, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were a senior in high school when all this hit, correct? Yep. Yep. So, so how have you navigated through all of that? Cause, cause I hurt personally for my kids, you know, they're only like 12, 13 uh, in that age group, but it's like, I can't imagine what it was like to have your senior year cut off like that. What, what did you do to get through? Um, honestly, it was pretty like hard in the first couple months. Cause the fourth quarter was going to be a really fun quarter for all of the senior like activities and stuff. Yeah. But um, as a musician and I also like paint and do art and it was, it was kind of easy for me to maintain like just doing art, art things that I didn't have time to do. Like when I was in my school year, because sure. school takes up a lot of time. So I was writing all the time, painting. And that's, I mean, that's what I've been doing pretty much throughout the summer still, but yeah, it's just maintaining that creativity, and I felt like um, I felt like we had all that time, and I needed to use it in a way that would help me in the future, or just make me more productive, and not just sit there on my phone. And so I felt like I was really productive, and like wrote a lot, and did a lot of art, and just kind of self-reflected on a lot of things. Um, yeah, I even like made a music video or I'm making a music video right now. So that's cool. just a lot of creative work and that's pretty much how I've, um, dealt through it. And, and, um, and yeah. so were, were you able to still pull from like some emotional places and write, or is this just kind of, kind of been numb? I mean, I know it's been weird, you know? Yeah, it's been kind of emotional for writing and then but then at the same time, I'm like, what do I write about? Because I'm just bored. Like, there's nothing really going on. And so, I don't know. It's kind of been like both. Yeah, but. definitely. So, so back to 40 a little bit. I mean, that was so cool to see you guys. I, I, and, and Randy put it in a, like a Brady Bunch term, you know. And yeah. so, so that was pretty great. But um, 
what does that song mean to you? Because that song was the perfect song for this, you know, particular time as far mm-hmm. as just kind of waiting it out and, and waiting for the Lord to kind of move, so to speak. And did you feel that kind of when you were singing it too? Yeah, I felt like it was a great song for everyone to do together, but like not just for everyone to do together, but for it to bring everyone together as far as like on social media and like all over the world for everyone to see that like, even though we're apart, we can still be together in some way. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what it mean, meant to me. I thought it was a really cool idea and I really loved it. Yeah. And, and, you know, so that song, like, you know, gosh, I can't even remember. I think it was like early eighties is when it came out. And, um, but when I, when I stumbled across it, of course, U2 has been a really big driving force in my life as far as music and stuff's concerned. Um, but it's just always been one of those solidifying songs that if you're in a rough place, you can kind of go back to that song and lean on it a little bit and feel, yeah. you know, just feel it coming through there. And so, you know, faith wise, is that, is, is your, is your song writing experience, does it have a little bit of a faith element to it? Or do you bring in some of your faith when you're writing or is it not as much there or how, how does that work for you? Yeah. So in the, um, when I first, my first EP that I wrote when I was 13, I had a lot of faith centered songs. And then after that, I was writing a lot about like personal experiences. I didn't have a lot of like faith mentioned in it, sure. but I still felt like when I was writing it, it still had that in there, even though it didn't say it exactly. Sure. And so same with like, just like emotional feelings that I've had with recent songs. Like it's just like my emotions pouring out. And even though it's not like faith centered in that way, um, it's still like, to me, like has that meaning behind it when I wrote it. Definitely. You know, I, I I sort of feel like, you know, the Psalms when David and various other authors are writing those anyway, it's not, it wasn't always, about you know God, so to speak, it was about what they were going through, and I think yeah. that's just as personal and just as you know important as as you know so to speak your your faith because you know I, I it's speaking from a, a Christian standpoint, I, it's really frustrating sometimes when you know the world or whoever just thinks that oh well you just you're a Christian so you're perfect or you're this or you're that and it's like no 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 hang on you know, faith doesn't change how life is still a struggle, you know, and yeah. things of that nature. And so, so it's really cool that, that you bring that up and you're, you're able to lay some of that in, into the music. And, you know, that's kind of what we're doing here at, at song and verse, so to speak, is we're taking songs and we're really like, you know, this artist may be quote unquote secular, but, but listen to this, this is biblical, what they're saying. There's a narrative here, you know? Yeah. And so that, so to speak. So tell us a little bit more about what is the future like for Sophie? What, what do you plan on doing here? You're going to keep your, your music going, correct? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. I definitely plan on doing music. Mm-hmm. I hope forever. Um, yeah. So since I graduated high school, obviously I've had a lot of time to think. And um, before signing up for classes this semester, I decided to take off and try to push my music a lot more Mm -hmm. and then hopefully do college and um, still trying to figure out all my college plans. But um, other than that, I definitely want to do music. I want to go on tour. I want everything. I think my main goal is just to inspire people to do whatever they want and like be inspired. Um, Yeah, that's, that's my goal. Really cool. Really cool. So, so let's, let's take it back a little bit more to the, to the solid rock here. What, so what exactly do you do there? And, and tell us a little bit about, you know, you don't have to give any names or anything, but let's say student A comes in and they're one of the ones that you do a lot of training with. How, how does that look and look, or excuse me, how, what does that look like? And you know, what can they expect if somebody in the Phoenix area hasn't been to the the solid rock yet, what should they expect when they show up there? Yeah, it's a really awesome environment, super welcoming. Um, every time I come in, I mean, I've made friends now, but like everyone is always welcoming to whoever walks in. And I think that is such a great environment to be in. 
um, I do, vo I teach vocal lessons, um, like one-on-one. -on -one. And so I have two students and they're really awesome. Um, yeah, we just work on whatever song they want to work on. And um, we do warm ups, and I just help them through that. And then, um, and then I am also a student where I have a teacher for guitar. Um, but everyone is just, just so amazing at the rock. Like everyone's just so welcoming. You create so many friends, and yeah, I just I really love it. Very cool. So. So it, let, let's say, so do you hang out there too, or is it just one of these things where you go in for your lessons or how does that all work for you? Yeah. Sometimes I hang out. I, since I live in Gilbert, it's like a pretty far drive mm -hmm. and I have to be back by a certain time, but um, sometimes I'll hang out and just talk with my friends. I mean, they have a lot of areas to just sit and chill or there's like an art studio, there's a dance studio, there's band room so like I do band practice sometimes and then um yeah there's just all these different places in there where you can just talk with people and play ping pong play games it's yeah it's really fun um so in Randy's discussion earlier today we talked a little bit about the Mesa area which I is that's that's a little bit closer to Gilbert isn't it yes yeah okay okay definitely so so what is that, what is that going to mean then? I mean, that, that's way, is the population down there that those are people that probably haven't even been up to the Phoenix area, a lot of them, correct? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So, so when it comes to, to the experience there, so we're looking at having two rocks open now, you're looking at expanding the audience there. I mean, contributing to something like this is, is a big you know, part of helping out the teens in your community. And it sounds like it's, it's done quite a bit for you in your life. I mean, if mm -hmm. you, if you were to say something to somebody about like, you know, sometimes people can't always volunteer time. They can't always, you know, get out and, and do stuff on that kind of a basis. But if they can donate instruments, uh, donate a little bit of a monetary deal and get in touch with the rock, how, how much does that help? Do you think? I think that helps a lot. Um, I, I mean, give to support the arts. I mean, I think it's a great thing to donate and it definitely with another, um, building going up in Mesa. Um, I feel like in Mesa, there'd be a lot of kids that will go there and cause it's, I feel like it's a very populated area mm -hmm. and, um, I think donating would be fantastic for those kids. Um, yeah, I just, I think it would be great to have that same experience that the Phoenix one does. And yeah. And, and so how many, and you know, of course not naming names or anything in that nature, but how, how, what kind of differences do you see making in some of your peers that are there that maybe, you know, when they first started going, you, you may have been wondering, Hey, this, this kid may be a little bit off or whatever. And, but have you seen changes and stuff of that kind of nature? I don't want to mean that negatively or anything. No, yeah, but, I totally get what you mean. Yeah. yeah, I've seen students come in, and a lot recently, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and um, just seeing them from their first day that they walk in, just kind of being nervous, like one would. And, um, and you just don't know who they are, which is fine. And then you get to know them, and then they become more comfortable, and they grow in a different way what not in a different way just they just grow and it's just really cool to see that happen um yeah yeah I mean you know it, it's kind of cool like everything you're talking about um I don't know about you but when I was that age uh you know I was probably slightly introverted but but as I made friends and opened up I kind of became a different person so to speak you know yeah. it's like it's like being given that opportunity what do you do with it? And sometimes you don't have that opportunity at school. I mean, I don't, there's, mm -hmm. it's just not there, you know? So yeah. I think it's pretty amazing what Alice Cheryl and, and the crew there at the solid rock have really accomplished to, uh, you know, bring that opportunity to teens. And I'm so, I'm so thankful that you've had that opportunity in, in, the, in that road to kind of walk down a little bit. And um, so are, are there some ways, and we'll go ahead and leave them, uh, you know, leave them down in the description as well, but are there some ways people can tap into your music? Are you on Spotify and things of that nature? Or? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm on Spotify, Apple Music, all the 
music platforms at Sophie Dorston. Mm -hmm. And then um, I have my website, uh, sophiedorstonmusic.com. And then you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all social media at Sophie Dorston Music. Okay, great. And, and I'll, I'll get those links and put them down there in the, in the description for everybody. Um, you know, one last question here, you know, this whole COVID stuff is just driving the world bonkers. I have, I'm guessing you haven't really been able to be out and, and do a whole lot, correct? Yeah, I haven't been out really. I just had one show last weekend, which was really nice. Obviously it was all like everyone had to be like super far apart and then right. masked and, um, yeah, but it was really, really nice to be out and doing a show in, since like five months ago. So that was really nice. But other than that, I haven't done anything else. <laughs> and and do you have anything scheduled or is it really kind of just... No. Nope. No. Nope. Yeah, just whatever. Whatever happens to venues and I don't know. We don't really know yet. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know, I, I saw a venue, I guess it was up in like, um, it was either Chattanooga or Knoxville. I can't remember where, but they had to shut their doors, you know, basically after being there for like 25, 30 plus years. Um, crazy. Yeah. Cause it's just, I mean, that's, that's what this business is. It's an in-person thing. You can't deliver, <laughs> mm -hmm. you can't deliver music and, and things of that nature. So tell us a little bit about it. You know, as we wrap this up a little bit, what is your future with, with the rock? Are you still going to be a teacher there? You're still going to be doing some sessions, that kind of thing. And, yeah. and how long can you be a contestant in their, their proof is in the pudding? Like what age is, um, is the cutoff for that? Yeah. So I definitely see my future at the rock as a musician and a teacher, a volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, I love it there and teaching really it just helps me as a musician as well as giving back to the community. And um, the limit for the proof is in the pudding competition is 25, oh. but I'm not sure I'm going to do it anymore. I've done it for a while, but I really, it's such a great experience as a musician. I think everyone should do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the cutoff is 25 and yeah, I think I'll probably stick around for a while. And, and for the proof is in the pudding, do, do they get, is it all local or are there some people that come in to do it or how does that work? Um, it's mostly local, but I've, I've seen from the past couple of years, there have been some people out of state. So, okay. yeah. Well, this has been great, Sophie. It's been really good to talk to you today. Um, you know, I, everything that comes out of that place, I haven't seen a video or, you know, a, a story that I haven't been inspired by. And so it's been so good to talk to you and I appreciate that. And we'll be following you along the way as well. Yes. Thank you so much. So cool. So cool. So this is Rock and Odd Todd signing out for today's segment number two, and we hope you have a great week. Take care. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Song of Verse podcast. Hopefully it was an uplifting, honest, and meaningful experience for you. We do accept donations. If you feel led to give to the Song and Verse Ministries, check out songandverseministries.com slash donate for a number of different ways to give back. And also be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. We hope you turn into the next episode of the Song and Verse podcast. Until then, keep searching for the DNA of God's Word found flowing through songs.